Network, the solution for humanity. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Living in the West. Now, Living in the West, uh, as some of you may know, is a series of episodes where we look into the lives of the minorities living in the West, the Muslim minorities in the West, trying to provide an ideas on vision and strategy for this group of Muslims. I have with me Sheikh Haytham Al Haddad from the Muslim Research and Development Foundation in the UK. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi. Sheikh, in previous episodes, we've spoken from the beginning, but the reason we need a vision, the reason this mass of people need a vision, how to believe in a vision, and what the basics of the vision was. And we spoke that it was Iman, it was Ibadah, Tawheed in its holistic approach, encompassing everything. I asked you to explain this in the previous episodes, and we came to the conclusion it was an individual priorities and community, communal priorities. We spoke about the individual priorities, safeguarding the Tawheed, safeguarding the, the pillars of Islam and abstaining from major sins. Now, let's look into the communal priorities. Is there an analogy? Are they very similar? Do they take the same form? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-anbiya'i wa al-mursaleen. Nabiyyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajba'in. As we have said about individuals, we have to achieve two levels in terms of community once we spoke about community. The first level is the basics of the Tawheed have to be fulfilled. And then after that we need to maybe achieve a higher level. In terms of the aspects of Tawheed, the main aspects of Tawheed need to be safeguarded and need to be secured for the Muslim community as a community not as individuals. It's a very important point for us to not look at individuals, but the actual community itself, yes. as a body, as a whole. As a body. Yes. And what does this mean? We have to differentiate between individual aspects or individual scope and communal scope. Yes, it is true that a government may deal with individuals differently, separately, but to deal with the community as a whole, it might be something different. For example, let me give this example. We see and we know this that the Western governments are so lenient or they have a degree of flexibility when we, they deal with Muslim individuals as individuals. However, when they deal with the community as a community, so this flexibility or this level of tolerance is not there anymore. And as a proof for that, maybe you know that Islam is not officially recognized as a religion in most of the Western governments. Mm, it's true. However, mm -hmm. on an individual level, maybe each government will deal with a high level of tolerance with individuals in terms of their practices and in terms of their faith. This may be covered because of the European law, the European law in general. Mm -hmm. This might be covered because of that. But do those governments approve or recognize Islam as a religion, as an official religion in these governments? As far as I know, it is only Spain, three countries in Europe, recognize Islam as a religion. Spain, Australia, and Belgium. These are the three countries, as far as we know, that recognize Islam as a religion. Mm -hmm. Other than those countries, as far as I am aware, it is not really recognized. Islam is not officially recognized as the second or as a religion in that government. 
Now, leave this recognition, although this is an aim we would like Muslims to achieve, Muslims in the West in general, and we have mentioned this to a number of organizations, Islamic organizations that operate on a European level, that they need to work to achieve this kind of recognition on the European level as well as country level. So leave alone this, okay, mm -hmm. leave it for a moment, but at least once each country looks to that community, to the Muslim community as a community, they should not force them to accept something against their creed or against their tawheed, something that violates tawheed directly. So this is the main, first main point, the tawheed, their creed, from a community level, they can't compromise upon this. Yes. They can't be oppressed upon this. Definitely. And again, the point that I would like to stress on is that we should differentiate between individuals and community. Because an individual, the individual, he may have an area to maneuver within, a bigger area. Mm -hmm. But a community as a community, they might not have that area to maneuver and to move around. Okay. So if an individual is saying, well, my Tawheed is secure and it is safeguarded, as an individual, yes, but maybe not as a community. And this is one of the sayings of many people, especially in the West, I'm okay personally. And this is the way they see the Islam. But really you're saying on a community level, they have to check as well. Yes, yes. Why? Because first of all, from Islamic point of view, there mm -hmm. is nothing called I, me alone. There is nothing. You are part of a body. Subhanallah. You are part of the body. In the Quran, mm -hmm. Allah Jalla wa never spoke to individuals. Allah Jalla wa is speaking to the whole body of Muslims. Have you ever seen in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal amana? No. Ya ayyuhal amanu. As a group of Jameen individuals. Wa kunu ibadallah. All of you together. Innama al mu'minuna. Ikhwa. Etc. So it's talking about the community and al-Muslimu akhul Muslim. So no one should say, well, I am as an individual, I am secure. I have said, guarded my tawheed, full stop, that's enough. No, you have to talk about a community as a community. Now, also, who is the community? What forms a community? It is you, me, him, and other people. So we are individuals, but together, whether we accept it or we do not accept it, we are considered to be a community. They are looking at us as a community. So we have to take those considerations that safeguard our Tawheed as a community. And as an example, by law, in some countries, the Muslim community, not the individuals, have to participate in some celebrations that include kufr, clear kufr, or clear shirk. Take the example of swearing an oath. Hmm. You know, if you go to the court or if you want to maybe sometimes to get your license or to get other documents, as an individual, you have to swear an oath. Now, in many European countries, there is freedom. And they are telling you, if you are a Muslim, then you can swear an oath by your own faith or according to your own religion. However, this is maybe in terms of the official mm. bodies within the government. However, I do remember that we received a question from one of the European countries about Muslim individuals or certain Muslim groups participating in certain activities. And they were commanded to swear an oath, to swear an oath according to that organization's belief system. And the Muslims told them that we are Muslims, we cannot swear that oath. Mm -hmm. They said, well, we are a secular organization and they have to swear an oath to represent this secular tendency. So they are not allowing any body to join that organization except if they swear an oath 
according to the secular values they hold. So this is on a communal level. We are not talking about individuals. We are talking about Muslim organizations want to participate in that body. Now, if it is a must for them mm -hmm. to participate in such bodies, then the Muslim community in that country needs to take care of this because this is a matter of violation of Tawheed on a communal level and they are bound to participate in such organizations. Okay, I've got a few comments on this. We're going to take a short break and inshallah I'll return to these comments. So we're going to leave you for a couple of minutes inshallah and return. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs> The value of money in the hereafter will be measured by its proper use in the present. According to the glorious Quran, one of the best ways to use your money is to spend it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by spreading his message of Islam. Peace TV is a non-profit Islamic satellite television channel that is primarily dedicated for just that cause, the proper presentation of Islam. It's a great choice to invest in it and a golden opportunity to purify your wealth in a way that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Support Peace TV. Send your zakat and donations to IRFI Al Ryan Bank, 47 Calthorpe Road, Birmingham, UK. B151TH. Pound account number 0113230. IBAN GB49ARAY 3000830113230. Sort code 300083. Swift BIC code ARAY GB. B22. Please confirm your contribution at support at peacetv.tv. Support Peace TV, the solution for humanity. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to Living in the West. Sheikh, just before the break, you spoke about uh, the community responsibilities, priorities. And the first aspect of this, you said, was safeguarding Tawheed on a community level. Can you give some examples? You said, for example, attending a service where you have to do a prayer, something which contradicts Tawheed in its basic form. So I, I've got a question for you, a rather skeptical question. So what about democracy, Sheikh? I mean, we live in the West. And really, we're not forced into accepting democracy, but really, we're really pushed into believing democracy, accepting parts of democracy. Um, isn't this democracy breaking parts of Tawheed, Sheikh? Because this itself is an identity. This itself is something which is against uh, Islam in the way it deals with things. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen, wa salatu wa salam, ala ashraf al-anbiya wa al-mursaleen, abdina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. First of all, the issue of democracy, I think it is a very wide topic. Okay. Maybe we need to tackle it in a separate episode. But here we have to differentiate between something that you are forced to do as an individual or as a community. It doesn't matter. But you are forced. By law, you cannot go against it. Or something that you are pushed to accept. Mm -hmm. For example, freedom. You said democracy, yeah. freedom. Freedom, everyone is talking about freedom and that it is one of our values, etc., etc. This is something, and to be by law bound not to go against it, this is something else. This is one thing. The other thing is there are certain aspects of democracy that themselves 
the Westerners, they never accept. So those matters that they don't accept within democracy, as well as there are certain aspects that they say that these aspects or these beliefs contradict freedom, the principle of freedom, mm -hmm. but they say this is not what we are talking about. Then we can use these as premises to go and speak against democracy and to go and speak against freedom mm -hmm. and to tell them that that's why we don't believe in this type of freedom, but we believe in another type of freedom. Similarly, about democracy, we say that we don't believe in this type of democracy, but we believe in another type of democracy. This is when we talk to them and we have to explain what we don't accept. This is very important. So I mean the levels of differentiation between democracy and various aspects of democracy and various aspects of freedom. Okay. For example, mm -hmm. and once we talk about democracy, democracy may mean that to allow the masses to participate in choosing what is better for them. Mm -hmm. This is the general meaning of democracy because you know it is coming from the word demos, the mm -hmm. Greek terminology. It means the right of people. Mm -hmm. Now, the right of people to select the ruler or the right of people to select the law. We have to be careful because here there are two things. And many Muslims are confused between both aspects of democracy. And many of our young people are confused. They say democracy is kufr. Follow stop. Without understanding these aspects. For example, the right to select the ruler, this is not a kufr. This is not kufr at all. And maybe you can say that this is very similar to shura. Of course, shura, we believe that shura is more advanced and is much better than this part of democracy. But this has some traits of shura in, in the way it takes a leader, yes? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why there are many differences. And we believe that our shura is better than their democracy. Mm -hmm. But the principle of democracy, this part of democracy, which is giving the people the right to select, this, in essence, is also in shura. Giving not the people, but certain people, the right to select. Okay. So the principle of giving the people the right to select, this does not violate Tawheed as such to okay. select the ruler. Even if we expand the issue of or the realm of Ahlul Halli Wal Aqd, the scope of Ahlul Halli Wal Aqd, and we said instead of having Ahlul Halli Wal Aqd, let us expand that and include, for example, all adult. So they, this group of people, they're the ones who select, say, for example, the leader in an uh, Islamic. In an Islamic, Islamic environment okay. and for an Islamic state. So no but if we this. expand mm. that, then this might be acceptable from an Islamic point of view and democracy will look like that. Mm -hmm. So that part of democracy is not kufr. So let's look at the other part, the laws now. Yeah, but it is very important that we distinguish which is which, which part is considered to be kufr and which No, this is something is which is very clear now, but it's something it. also new to many people, I think, because yes. they've always taken it as one, democracy. As one. democracy. Now, selecting the law, mm -hmm. selecting the law. Here, there is a difference between forcing you to select a certain law or you go and say, well, I am against that law. And see, the Western people, they don't believe in Allah Jalla wa'ala. They don't believe in the divine. Mm -hmm. So they wanted a system. And they found that this is the best system for them. Mm -hmm. Because they don't have an external authority to tell them what is right and what is wrong. So how do they know what is right, what is wrong? Mm -hmm. By introducing this system. So this part of democracy... It does not force you to believe in it as the best system, but it may force you to participate in having your say. 
Mm -hmm. And there is a difference between both. If they say that no citizen will be a citizen or will live in this country unless he believes strongly in democracy, then we can say, yes, we need to look at it because this might violate Tawheed. But if they say that we need our citizens or people living within our country to use democratic process in order to achieve what they want to achieve, then this is something else. Here they are not forcing you to believe that democracy is the best system. It is true that it is the best system for them, but for Muslims we believe in the divine. And we believe that Allah Jalla wa Ala is the one who legislates for us and he is the only legislator. And that's why we should be careful when we say that democracy is kufr as such. Now, even the other part, when they say, for example, let us vote for homosexuality. Hmm. Imagine that they allowed people to vote for homosexuality. Now you, as an individual, why don't you go and speak against homosexuality? We, as a community, why don't we speak against homosexuality openly? Why not? Mm -hmm. This is our problem. They are not forcing us to accept the principle that they are putting, but they wanted us to have our saying. Now, this is not a simplistic explanation of democracy, but this is the, the essence, reality, mm -hmm. the essence of what is going on. Now, when they force us to accept democracy as a belief system, and no one can go against that belief, then we need to take this matter seriously and we need to consider it from all angles. Okay, Sheikh. Now, when we come to all angles of considering this, Sheikh, there's one point that you put in there. And you spoke about the hukum of Allah, the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, a Muslim implements this in his life. This is the difference, okay, between the West and the Muslims. We implement the hukum of Allah. What about the court system now in the West? Because the court system in the West, we have to live by it, we use it, we abide by it. It's sometimes the only recourse we have. Isn't this breaking the connection with Tawheed Sheikh on a community level as well as an individual? Well, see, we have to be careful. And you are bringing a very big topic. I, okay. I doubt that we can cover it within the coming few minutes. But we have to be careful as Muslims. We should be mature enough. And not because this something that considered to be against Islam, something considered to be kufr, then as a whole it is kufr. We take it as a lump sum and it is kufr. And let me just conclude by, I think we have a very limited amount of time, by okay. giving you this joke. And it is a real joke, it happened with me. One time we went to one of the parks in London with some Muslims and some children. And... The time for Dhuhr came and we wanted to pray Dhuhr. So we said, where is the Qibla? This is the sun here. And so, so the Qibla might be in this direction. And then another brother took his watch and he said, well, according to my watch, the Qibla is this direction. So I said to them, let me play this trick. I said to the brother, subhanallah. Now this is the sun created by Allah. And this is our body. And we can know that this is the direction of the Qibla. And the Qibla is a ibadah. Ibadah. We are worshipping Allah Jalla wa ala. And you are telling me by this sa'a, which is made by the kuffar, this watch that is made by the kuffar, and this watch made by them telling me how to worship Allah Jalla wa ala and telling me the direction of the Qibla? Believe me, the brother was so amazed. And he stopped for a while. And then he couldn't say anything. And then he accepted my argument. So he re-evaluated re and he accepted what was going on. Yeah, he accepted that and he said, okay, we'll go for this direction. Then I said, subhanallah, ya brothers. Is it a matter that we just put in your argument any word of kufr inside the argument and Wait. then you will win the argument? No, that is not right. We have to be mature. It is not because a court system is a kufr system then... If we are involved in it, then we are involved in kufr. No. And inshallah, we will explain that okay, in I think detail that's a good point for us to start in the next episode. Jazakallah, Sheikh Haytham. Well, 
That's all the time we have for today on Living in the West. I hope you can join us in the next episode. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs>